today we'll create a C++ project in Latex Architect. So when you bring up Latex Architect, this is the screen you start out with, and let's just directly go and create a new project. So we come and start and create a new project. Just go, go from the profile screen, menu dialog to the create new project dialog. Um, you choose the module type. Um, let's go and choose the C and C++ with Clang. That's the compiler that's built into Latex. Latex can also take data from Clockwork and from Understand. All right, so we'll go ahead and build a project from Clang. Uh, there are three different ways uh, by which you can enter the data. If you happen to be working on Linux, then you then you then you then you, can, then you should generate a build specification file. And in order to generate a build specification file, we give you a utility called LX Build. The reason we do this, or the reason why, whenever we do a C and C++ analysis, it's important uh, to specify what the how you are how you compile, what the macros are, where the include files are located, and what files link together, and that's what the build specification file contains. So on a Linux. Uh, you, there is a utility that we provide called LX Build, which will allow you to generate that build specification file. And you can read about it here. So let's go there and quickly check it out. Um, you, 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 will, uh, you will run the LX Build command, uh, and then you'll run whatever command you use to build your applications. For instance, if you use make files, then make. If you happen to use Gradle or happen to use WA, WAF, Whatever build system that you happen to use, specify that command. And what LX build does is to watch the compiles and the links as they take place. Uh, and once it has that list of all the compiles and links, it can then it then generates a build specification file, which is then used by Latex to actually compile your project uh, and to be able to generate uh, and to be able to then set you up for architecture analysis. So let's go back to Latex Architect. The second option is to use Visual Studio, and we'll take a look at that in a second. And finally, the third option is actually to specify the source files and directories directly into the project configurer. And when you do that, you then get to specify what the macro options are, which files go into which units, uh, and all that is available for you to do that, do there. So let's start by taking a look at the Visual Studio and how you how you are able to build a project uh, using Visual Studio. So let's select Visual Studio. Um, let's specify the Visual Studio solution file or the project file. So we'll browse to it. So we'll browse to the directory which contains a solution file or if we wanted to load a single project file, we could load that as well. So let's go back and load the solution file. And when you load a solution file, it will load all the projects inside it. Uh, and then choose the build configuration. So we choose release Win32. We say OK. Uh, and now we can actually create a project. And the benefit of doing this is that the Visual Studio project gives us the compile options, the include file locations, uh, and so on. And thereby, you would have built a project. And you can see that we actually built a project. And you can then view the project. Uh, you can you can you can examine the project. Uh, you can look at the dependencies, and Latex will allow you to look at the dependencies down to the line in code where the dependencies happen to be. Uh, we'll be able to look take a look at it from a top-down structure, starting all the way from your project uh, down to your directories, down to your files, down to your methods, uh, variables, and so on. All right, let's now look at the the third method that we talked about. So we've just built uh, uh, we built the Studio project. Uh, let's now build uh, build it using a project configurer, or at least take a look at how one does that. So those are the three options, and they are actually documented here. Um, if you don't want to see this dialog, you can simply turn this off. But I do find it useful for first-time users to actually keep it on, uh, so you can quickly glance at the at the project, uh, um, at how to build the project. Um, so the third option is project configurer. Uh, and in a project configurer, we directly specify the source files and the directory. So you browse to the right place where you, where you happen to be. Uh, and then 
you specify it, you say it, you, you select it. And now you can see that if we select any of these uh, directories, uh, you know, then you can expand this. And if you keep expanding all the way down, uh, you're down to the to the files and directories. You can select, add files, remove uh, remove files. You can even remove directories. And there is a whole range of options that are now available to you. Uh, and through these options, you can actually say just compile a single file if you want, which I find particularly useful uh, when when I'm building, when I'm using Project Configurer and I happen to run into compile errors and I want to just don't want to build the entire project again and again, I just compile a handful of files, figure out, fix that, and then build the project. And once you have built the project, there is act there are actually reports available which. Uh, a useful report, for instance, is the Clang report that you want to look at once you've built it. You can apply diagnostics uh, uh, for by file. Uh, and so we're looking at the one we built by Visual Studio in this particular case. And it said, oh, there are files with errors and no files with warnings. And when we expand the files with errors, we can see that there was a, actually a, a header file that wasn't fine in this particular case. That's because the Visual Studio isn't loaded on this system. And so if you are doing, uh, if you happen to use the Visual Studio analysis, it's a good idea to have Visual Studio be installed also on that PC. There are ways of doing this otherwise, of actually specifying the include files on your own, but the simplest way is to simply have the Visual Studio be there, uh, and then you would have done the analysis. So, so this is how you create three different ways of creating a project. Uh, and once you have created a project, you have all kinds of analysis available to you. You can do the architecture analysis to find the dependencies which are problematic. You can find issues such as header files that you that are being included that, that didn't have to be included, uh, dependencies that exist that shouldn't have existed that might even surprise you. Um, so, so that's it. Uh, once you've created a project, you will have all kinds of very useful architectural information available for you. Thanks for watching. And uh, for more information, you can come to our website at latix.com um, and you can even get a free evaluation from there. Thanks.